Okay, let's move on to another algorithm we've been looking at for quite some time. That's the depth first search. And let's see if that makes an, an interesting sense. So suppose the same problem that you have the eight puzzle problem and that's how it looks at that's my soul state and remember that when I say that the implementation of a depth first search it means as a tree search by default it doesn't mean a graph search so let's apply the two actions very quickly so the first action will of course be a left and the other action will be a up so left will give me one minus one three five two seven eight four six and the other action will of course be one three seven five two minus one eight four six if this implementation makes you feel there's something weird that's not what you do you just take this make a recursive call to this make a recursive call to the other never generate that so there are two implementations in terms of a minute caveat this one is called as a pure dfs where you generate all children and of course the children are still still in a frontier which is a stack so it follows a last in first out principle if you just make an immediate recursive call it's called as backtracking implementation so this is a pure dfs so i have the second child also in although it will not get its chance so let's apply the action so right now it could be left it could be up it could be uh here so it becomes one three minus one five two seven eight four six and of course i know that this one is exactly repeat but it's a tree search it's not a graph search I'll get something about over here, of course. This one won't even get its chance. So this is my frontier in a pure implementation. In a backtracking, you from here go here, immediately go here, no children executed. And of course, next what I will do is, is left. So one minus one, three, five, two, seven, eight, four, six. Of course, it's a repetition, but it's a tree search. Had it been a graph search, I would have pruned it right here itself. So it's a pretty ridiculous algorithm as a tree search. All that I'm doing is I have a tree which is aside a blank, and I'm doing like this: depth one, depth two, depth three, depth four, depth five, depth six. I'm moving three around, that's all. It'll never reach the goal. Funny algorithm. So, I have to analyze it. It's not making a lot of sense, although, but still, let's do that. It's our job. So, complete, of course, no. I just now gave an example wherein the search algorithm was not to be found as complete. So of course DFS is not complete. They, it cannot find even a single solution. What will it find the optimal solution? All it was doing move around three here and there. Ah, time complexity. Now I know the answer is infinite. How many times can this happen in finite? It'll never come out. Still, let me use exactly the same terms and write something. So it's B raised power D max. 
where D max is the maximum depth that the graph can go as a free search. Remember, I did not say a graph search. As a free search, whatever maximum depth the graph can go, the search can go, which for this example, like many others, will actually be infinite. So, uh, remember D is the depth or we write down terms, many times people get confused. D is the depth of the optimal solution. C star is the cost of the optimal solution. D max is the maximum depth possible. So D and C star have to be finite. D max can be infinite. So it's doing terribly bad. Memory complexity at every time, the only thing that I need to store is surprisingly just one part and along with that all its children okay here it was bad i did not get the feeling so i will have to redraw a general tree so let's redraw in a very general tree and let us see what actually is stored and this time i'll take a finite graph as an example so that's my first step. Remember, this is the leaves, which are the frontier. This is closed, which is the non-leaves. The second step, the third step, I'm going in the depth first manner. Uh, not here. So after this, what happened was that this did not generate anything. This did not generate anything. So I backtracked. And this was the next note. Here, both of them did not generate anything that end. So I'm around over here. It did not generate anything. So I'm around over here. This generates this, this. So right now, what am I storing is, I do not store this. It was stored when it was being created. It's a recursive call. When you backtrack, everything of that is removed. So you basically just store in the current branch. So you only store in the current branch till the current node. And along with that, because it's a pure backtracking implementation at every step, you stole all the siblings. So I said that I'll generate all the siblings, store it somewhere and then travel one after the other. So you additionally store in siblings. So the complexity of storing the part is till depth of one, one node is stored, uh, till depth of zero, one node is stored, till depth of one, two nodes are stored and so on. So that's D max times all the siblings are also stored times B. This is if you have a pure DFS implementation, if you do backtracking one and move around the graph in this obvious order where you do not first generate all the siblings and then exp Load them one after the other, then it just becomes O times T max in a backtracking implementation. So that's a memory complexity. I only need to store in the current branch, the current part which could go till a maximum of the max. And of course, if it's not a backtracking implementation, then I need to store in B additionally. So now there's something good. There's absolutely something good. And the something good is that you've seen a lot of exponential so far. It is the first and only time you are seeing something linear. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the memory complexity of the depth first search. So depth first search is very bad algorithm. Neither complete nor optimal. 
time complexity, forget about it. But it has a linear memory complexity. Now, whenever you try to nudge people about complexity and time, the standard thing they'll say, we will give a lot of time, it's offline, you said, map is static, it doesn't change. I let it compute for 10 minutes, 10 hours, overnight, next day morning as well, I've got a lot of time. That's not what it happens. And that's honestly what happened with me practically when one of the reviewers for the journals asked me to compare an exponential time algorithm. I said, I'll wait it running. I'll let it run for a few hours. And I'll say, I waited for so many days. It still did not give the correct answer. I had a spare laptop. What really happened very quickly, my 6 GB system went out of RAM. How much time will it take for you to exhaust 6 GB of RAM? Remember, when you watch a movie, you give something out to, into the RAM and you also take out something from the, from the RAM. It's a two-way process, so RAM utility is constant. Search, algorithm, BFS, UCS, you keep adding to the RAM, your RAM always keeps on getting more and more stuff because you're storing a closed, because you're storing a fringe whose size will only increase with time. And because the size will, okay, Frontier can expand or contract, but your clothes will always expand. And because of these parents be also being stored things, all the nodes are ultimately maintained. So you're not freeing out any memory in BFS and UCS practically. And therefore, how much time will it take for you to buy your compute, exhaust out your entire RAM? Nothing. You've got such great systems. Nothing. So, what practically happens is, even if you have a lot of time, you run out of memory very quickly, and then you say that, okay, I have time, but I don't have memory. That's exactly what happened at using online judges the last time this course was floated. Most of the people did not complain. So you allowed us 10 seconds only at the online judge. That wasn't the first problem. The first problem was we don't have memory. And then for some questions, even when if I had to, wanted to increase the memory, the IDE, the online judge would not allow me to do that. You run so fast out of memory, you don't even imagine. All your supercomputing is gone. Once you don't have memory, you cannot store in partial results. So, there's only one silver lining in the horrible cake of DFS and therefore let's explore that further. Let's see if we can make something, at least make some positives. If we can do that, we would be at an uh, interesting thing. So let's go back to the example. We have a eight claw, uh, we have an eight puzzle game and in this eight puzzle game all we are doing is right left right left right left right left i cannot have a closed because the moment you apply a graph search what really happens as a graph search that the right left is eliminated out over here so the right left gets eliminated out over here. So for finite graph, you actually get this as y, which is very good. But the memory is what is taken by fringe as a graph search. The memory is what is taken by the fringe or your frontier, which is the priority Q in a normal sense or a stack for just for the sake of it and a closed. So if you implement it as a graph search, even though this still remains to be Dmax times B, and this becomes Y for a finite graph. So DFS as a graph search. 
DFS as a tree search. So this looks much better. Of course, it's still not optimal. And there's no change over here. So in memory, even though this becomes D max times B, the close still has a memory of B raised to power D max. So the linear memory is gone. I want this without a compromise on this. So total memory is this plus this or total memory is O times B raised to power D max, which of course is a total of B raised per D max. So this is definitely a very bad search. Better than this is uh, BFS itself. So I somehow need to stop this and doing a graph search instead of tree search is not a solution because it detects cycles, it detects repetitions, but it spoils the only good thing that BFS has.